So when we're building a system, just to add on something here. So if you're ever confused on whether it's a, a three to one or a two to one or a four to one, when you're tied off to the load, the system is always on. If you're tied off to the anchor, it's an even system. So we're gonna be we're gonna be tying the end of our rope to the load. So the system automatically is gonna be odd because we're gonna have so many moving pulleys. So if we were if we were anchored up here and tied down there, then the system would be even. So if you're unsure whether you're tying a three to one, if, if you're tying a three to one, make sure the end of the rope is at the load. That's the easiest way to remember. All right, so um, I said we're leaving an element out of this just for simplicity. We'll add it in later, not tonight. Um, what we're leaving out is the belay system, basically meaning the backup to the main line through what we're using here. Um, the, the belay never gets loaded. It never sees any force on it unless the main, the main line breaks. Um, along with the belay, you have some sort of belay device. Um, we'll get into that later, but Patrick was talking about the two prostates right next to each other being needed to be wrapped in the same direction. That is a, it's called a tandem triple wrap prostate. That can be used on a bullet. Um, and like I said, it's there in case the main line fails at the back end. But we're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to focus on tying the main line. Uh, so what Tugboat is doing is he's tying a two-point fix and focus on the load. Um, the one we have rigged up, the, the carabiners don't don't fit on the around the tubing. That could be realistic, I guess. Nine times out of ten, we're using it on Stokes basket, and that's what it's made for. But. Nah. Um, I don't, um, depends on the state, I believe. Uh, Pennsylvania uses the uh, figure eight on a bike. Um, when you have the two lines together, you can incorporate them all into one knot. What do you mean? From the banner side, and it's still back. You can also use all the money that I don't want to check into. Yep. Cashier's check, somebody's check. All right. Cashier's check or money order. The money order. The postal money order. All right. Uh, 
take up that slack. So come on over here. Another use of the the prusik, I mean uh, the triple wrap prusiks is what we call a progress catch or progress capture. Um, we attach it to our anchor, the beam that's on our anchor, and then to the side of the rope that the load is on. All right. So what this does is say this this team um, say this team is pulling right, and they're pulling the load. And then something happens, or they want to rest, it, it captures the progress that you've made so far. All right? And then to keep moving again, it's not, it's not locked up or anything. You just start pulling. And remember, this is that prussic mining pulley. See how the, the square corners are catching that and, and letting the rope slide through? See that? And then when it starts falling down the hill, it catches it. All right? That's the same concept that we would use if we had a belay tied in here. We just have two of those right next to each other, and someone would sit here and let the rope come through. All right, now you can see how easy I can pull on this and move the load. All right. Any questions? This is a simple three to one. Just a comment. Sure. The guys that are doing driver training, the driver ladder truck is easy to have to do this. There you go. Um, from this, you can build. You can build off of this. This is the basics. This is this is the basic shit. So, so what we're gonna do? Last thing, we're gonna break this all down, and then you guys are gonna do it as a team, and then uh, we'll be good. Does it matter where you put that first? Oh. Okay. Uh, good point. Um, from that pulley there to this pulley here is called your throw. It's the amount that you can haul without having to reset the system. So if I pull this all the way, right, and that pulley gets all the way up here, I can't go anywhere. I've, ran out of, I've run out of throw, all right? Um, that is important. I want to maximize the amount of throw I have so I don't have to reset the system too many times. Um, in reality, and the, more, the more back and forth, the less throw in the distance. Correct. Um, so this is a six this one, and say right. three one. The distance is Right. The, the, more, the more, the higher you get in the systems, you're going to be using more rope because you have more pulleys involved, you have more back and forth, and you're getting to the max capacity of your rope as well. You have less room to move, so it's, it gets complicated. Um, in reality, if this is, like I said, a hill, that, that patient's all the way at the bottom of a steep hill, this mechanical advantage right here wouldn't be set up right here. What we would do, it would be just this single line going down, and we would use this to change the direction of the rope, and we would set this system up just on a different part of the rope over here. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm saying? Right, so we would set the, right, so we would set the hauling portion up, 
on flat ground at the top of the hill. And we use this as a change in direction to just point ourselves over that way. Does that, that explain that? You could have as many changes of directions as you need. It's not creating any, just so you have a pulley, it's just not creating a mechanical advantage. Right. So I have no room, to, we have no room to work right here. So I'm like, where the hell are we gonna find room? Well, change the direction over this way, and then tie an anchor here and change it this way, and now we have room to move, all right? All right, we'll bring it down.